Let's talk about the greenhouse effect. Now, no doubt you have heard of the issues of climate change and global warming, and often lumped in with those discussions is this term, greenhouse effect. Now, certainly, climate change, global warming, these are major problems facing the planet, things we're going to have to deal with if we hope to continue living and thriving here. But the greenhouse effect, that's something a little different. It's essentially just a scientific phenomenon that we see happening on Earth and on other planets and presumably throughout the entire universe that I would argue is actually a good thing for the Earth. It allowed life to evolve and thrive on this planet. And without a greenhouse effect, there wouldn't be life. So it doesn't really deserve the bad reputation it has been given. So our goal in this video is to understand what exactly the greenhouse effect is, how it works, and then how it relates to the problem of climate change. So let's dive right in. First, let's understand what we're talking about here. We live on the Earth, this giant rocky ball that's spiraling through our solar system, moving around the sun once a year. And that ball is surrounded by these layer of gases called the atmosphere, all of which is warmed by energy from the sun. But because it's so important in this story, we're going to focus in on the atmosphere. And let's start by giving it a nice, clear definition. Right? So the atmosphere, it's this narrow and fragile shell of gases it surrounds the Earth, and it gradually thins out into space. And it's important for a lot of reasons. It provides the air we breathe, and it protects us from harmful energy from space. But it's also a key player in the greenhouse effect and ultimately in the issue of climate change. So what about what it's made of? So what's the composition of the atmosphere? As we know, there must be oxygen, right? So 21% of the atmosphere is oxygen. You might be surprised to know that it's such a low percentage because that's what we're so focused on. And that's really just because that's what the human body needs to, to respire. So 21% oxygen, 78% of the air we breathe is actually nitrogen. And that leaves 1% that we're going to call other. But we should be aware, because it's important in this context, of what that other actually includes. So the other includes a whole bunch of different gases, um, but three of the more notable ones are methane, water vapor, and carbon dioxide. And we're going to come back to why those are such important components of our atmosphere. Now, as we mentioned, our atmosphere and our Earth are warmed by energy from the sun. So these, these kind of beams of energy coming out from the sun. The sun, of course, is a star, uh, and it therefore undergoes a process known as nuclear fusion, which you can learn about in some of my other videos. Um, and that process releases energy. We call that energy insulation, which stands for incoming solar radiation. This is essentially just energy from the sun. And that's what warms the air and the earth and, again, allows us to live here. Now, we need to know a little bit more about that insulation, about energy in general, to understand the greenhouse effect. Uh, the sun emits energy, as we just said, uh, but it it emits all different types of energy, and it's important to know the difference between those types of energy, and it really is a simple thing known as wavelength. Some energy has a short wavelength, which means it travels like this, while other energy has a longer wavelength, which means it travels like this. And when we classify different types of radiation or energy flying through the universe, we do it according to how long that wavelength is. So let's take a look at the different types of energy. This is something known as the electromagnetic spectrum, and it shows a classification of all the different types of energy that are flying through the universe. All the way on the left-hand side, we start with gamma rays. They're going to be the shortest wavelength energy there is, so very, very short wavelength, uh, potentially very harmful to living things. And as you go to the right, the wavelength gets longer. We then have X-rays ultraviolet, and then this very important band known as visible light. Visible light is important. It's called visible light because that's what human beings can see. That's what our eyes can detect. And it's broken down into the different colors of the rainbow. That's right. The only difference between the color violet and green and orange, etc., is the wavelength of energy that's being emitted. And that's all in the visible portion of the spectrum. 
But there is then longer wavelength energy that exists as well, including things like infrared and then microwaves and then eventually radio waves. So these are all types of energy and they're all zipping through the universe. What we want to focus on is the visible light spectrum. And the reason we want to emphasize this is because if we look at energy from the sun, the vast majority of energy given off by our star, the sun, is within the visible light spectrum. All that means is most of the energy that the sun emits is visible light. And that's a good thing. That's what we can see with our eyes. That's what allows us to see here on Earth. So let's pause here and just sum up what we've gone through so far. Okay, four key things. Number one, the atmosphere is this narrow, fragile shell of gases that gradually thins out to space. And number two, it is composed mainly of nitrogen and oxygen. And then there are lesser amounts of CO2, carbon dioxide, methane, and water vapor. Number three, energy travels in the form of these electromagnetic waves with different types of energy having different wavelengths. And then number four, most of the energy or the radiation emitted by the sun is in the form of this fairly short wave visible light. So those are key things we need to know. So now we can come back and talk some more about the greenhouse effect. Now, there's a reason it's called the greenhouse effect, and that's because it works in the same way that a greenhouse works. So before talking about the atmosphere, let's take a look at a greenhouse. So in case you don't know, a greenhouse is a structure that is built that is mainly made out of glass. The roof, the walls, everything is made of glass. And greenhouses are used to grow plants. Uh, and there's a reason that greenhouses are used to grow plants, and that's what we need to understand. So let's take a look here. Okay, so we have our greenhouse. It's got some plants inside, all made of glass. And we have the sun, which is emitting this short wave visible light. Now, one of the properties of glass is that it allows visible light to pass through easily. This is why we can see through windows, because visible light goes right through the glass, right? So all that visible light from the sun goes right through the glass, right into the greenhouse. Now, the plants, the pots, the soil, the floor, any furniture, anything else that's in the greenhouse is going to absorb that sunlight, absorb that visible light. And when anything absorbs energy, it gets hotter. So the plants, the soil, everything's going to warm up a little bit. Now, once those surfaces are warm, they are going to re-radiate or give some of that heat back off. So they've absorbed light, they've warmed up, and now they're going to give some of that heat back off. But when it comes out, it's emitted in a different form of energy. It's now given off as heat or infrared, which is longer wavelength. So you can see that right here. Now, this is where the glass comes into play. Infrared does not pass through the glass. Rather, the infrared is trapped by the glass, causing the air within the greenhouse to warm up. So long story short, sunlight, visible light can come in but then it's converted and re-radiated as heat, which can't get out. And so this is why greenhouses are ideal for growing plants. So even if it's cold outside, without having to use a heater or any other kind of tools, your greenhouse is going to stay nice and warm with bright sunlight, allowing plants to grow. Now, here's what this has to do with our atmosphere. Let's take a look. We have the Earth again. And of course, the Earth is surrounded by the atmosphere, this shell of gases. And we are constantly being hit by sunlight emitted by the sun. Again, this is short wave visible light. And just like the glass in the greenhouse, the visible light passes right through our atmosphere for the most part and makes it all the way down to the surface. Now, of course, not all of it makes it all the way down. Some of it is reflected. Some of it is absorbed by the clouds. But a good amount of it makes it down to the surface. And of course, just like in the greenhouse, the surface is going to absorb some of that radiation and it's going to warm up. Now, to draw my parallel back to the greenhouse, when the surface absorbs heat and gets warmer, it's going to then re-radiate some of that heat back out into space. 
but again, it has been transformed from shortwave visible light into longer wave infrared. Just like the glass, infrared is going to be trapped. But in this case, it's trapped by greenhouse gases. This is why they're called greenhouse gases. And these are things like CO2, carbon dioxide, methane, and water vapor. And because that heat cannot escape back out to space, it's rather held in our atmosphere, it causes our atmosphere to warm up. So that brings us to another key point, which is greenhouse gases, CO2, methane, water vapor, they absorb this outgoing infrared and causes the atmosphere to warm up. And so we have very direct evidence of this. We can recreate this in a laboratory, but all you have to do is look at a chart of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere and global temperatures like this one. So you can see this goes back, I don't know, 140 years or so. And as CO2 in our atmosphere, one of the key greenhouse gases has gone up dramatically, so have the temperatures shown in red here. So it's very clear. So now the question is, well, why is there all of this CO2 all of a sudden? Well, CO2 is a byproduct of the burning of fossil fuels. Fossil fuels are things like coal and oil and natural gas. And when you burn those fuels, CO2 is released into the atmosphere. Now, if you look at this over the last 50, 60, 70 years, we have been burning more and more and more and more fossil fuels for cars and transportation, air travel and factories and production and all sorts of things, agriculture. And that has released massive amounts of not only CO2, but methane and other greenhouse gases into the atmosphere. And because of that, the less heat has been able to escape and the temperatures have risen. So that brings us to number six, which is that human-caused pollution has added greenhouse gases to the atmosphere and resulted in rising global temperatures. And so this is how we get back to the issue of climate change. Climate change is temperatures rising around the planet and causing all sorts of terrible consequences like stronger hurricanes, wildfire, drought, more severe storms, etc., the reason the planet is warming is because there's more greenhouse gases in the atmosphere, making the greenhouse effect more severe. So the bottom line is we can't blame the greenhouse effect. The greenhouse effect is not at fault. The greenhouse effect is what allowed the planet to be warm enough for life to take hold in the first place. The problem is when human beings mess with the greenhouse effect by adding additional greenhouse gases to the atmosphere and making the climate warm up. So hopefully that clarifies the greenhouse effect and how it works. Thanks for watching.